Hey guys, how's it going? Today is Saturday, August 19th, 2023. Today, my dad, he just left right now off the tractor and disc bind. He's going down to mow some second cutting grass hay down the road here. While he's doing that, I got some work I want to do up the heifer farm. All the pens out back, they need bedded up. And then I also need to feed them grain. I'll grab some grain and then we can go up there, get them all bedded up and taken care of. Up here at the upper barn, we have pretty much a Heinz variety. We got some Holstein heifers that we're raising to be future milkers. And then we have some, some linebacks in here. It's a beef calf right there. And we also have some half Angus calves here. That would be the solid, the solid red ones. And then uh, the solid black one right there on stands. And then there's a couple over here. There's a couple beef heifers in here. And then the rest are steers. They're bulls and then we steered them and we'll raise them for beef. We have been breeding some of the the beef heifers. Now they'll actually be coming fresh here. I think next month maybe. They're actually up on the hill with some of the other dairy heifers. We don't have too many dairy animals at home right now. Most of them are just these calves. And then the rest of the cattle out back, they're all beef. They're all pretty much steers. We're gonna be selling some of them off here here in the next month, we'll be, we're gonna finish them out and then we'll sell them off because right now we don't have a whole lot of people wanting beef. So they're getting too big till the next person would want beef, they'd be too big. So we're just gonna finish them off and sell a bunch of them. We also need space too because we'll have dairy heifers coming off the pasture, coming home and they'll, they'll need a place to live. So yeah, we raise pretty much beef cattle in the summer and then dairy cattle and beef all winter because all of our dairy cattle's out on pasture during the summertime. This pen here to the left are older than the animals here to the right. So this pen here on the left, they get a five gallon bucket full of calf feed, five gallon bucket full of Heimwisher corn. And then this pen here, they have more animals in here, but they're younger. So they get three buckets of this calf feed. These calves also get corn silage. That's what's in here. It's been here from yesterday. We feed corn silage every other day. So we feed them enough every other day. That they have enough for two days. That way we don't have to feed them every day. This is the bigger barn out back here. You guys have seen me doing plenty of stuff out here before. Feeding and bedding, all kinds of stuff. This is actually three different barns out here. The upper barn, there used to be a steer pen that sat here, an old log barn, and then the heifer pen here. This is where we keep our breeding age heifers in the winter time. Right now they're out on pasture. We keep the breeding age heifers in here and run a bull with them. And then once they're bred, we move them down to the dry cow pen right here, which is full of hay. We also keep dry cows in here. They're out on pasture too. Like I said, pretty much all of our dairy animals out on pasture as far as the older animals go the younger animals we keep at home and give them calf feed and stuff because they wouldn't do very well out on pasture compared to the older animals I started talking about the beef heifers that we had bred to angus we've never really done that before we never really raised beef heifers and bred them and let them raise calves but we're gonna try that out see how it works for us i know there's more money and beef than there is dairy so it'd be kind of nice to have two operations going any dairy farmer knows that dairy prices aren't that good and they haven't been real good rather than our heifers our dairy heifers having uh, half angus calves and then us raising them bottle feeding them we'll uh, sell them off at a younger age and then the beef heifers that we have bread that we have in calves we'll just let them raise those calves it's uh less work for us it would kind of make more sense to do it that way We're raising dairy calves and not so much as many beef calves as we have been raising in the past couple years i've actually brought some old hay in from out front there we had a pile of hay that we bailed off of this pasture field up here 
it was what the heifers didn't eat and we clipped it off and it was just too much to let lay there because the hay wasn't the grid back is good because it's been matted down by that hay so it was pretty much mulch hay we knew that the cattle weren't going to eat it so we were just going to use it for bedding i got that all cleaned up and brought must have been about five or six bales in here i just got to pull some of this mesh wrap out i got them knocked apart got to put a bale rye in this rack a bale rye in this rack and then there's some more there's some old corn fodder out there we're going to bring that in here knock a couple of those bales apart in this pen bring some over here for the steers and let them do what they want with it. I'm sure they'll eat some of it, but the rest they can just lay around on and stomp it in. These rye bales were cover crop from this year. We mowed it off, baled it up, and then we inline wrapped it. So we brought this up from home. Really good stuff. The rye, it tests really high in protein. So we started to feed the rye to help finish off these steers since we want to sell some of them. And they also get corn silage from the ag bag up there, some dry hay, and then we feed, we top dress the corn silage with high moisture corn. I gotta clean this pen here out. That's the breeding age heifer pen. We're gonna bring some of those beef heifers down off the hill that are going to be due soon. And we'll keep them in here to keep a closer eye on them, make sure they don't have any trouble calving because they're out on pasture. It's not as easy to go check them all the time. But when they're right here at home, we're here every day, so we uh, can see what's going on. If anybody needs help calving, we'll be here to help. Them. That'll keep them busy for a while. Got the little bucket on the skid loader. This pen doesn't have too much manure in. Right here, there's a little bit. It's kind of sloppy. And then up here, there's some dry manure here and there, but I'll just scrape it out good. And then I can bed the pen up and it'll be good enough to have heifers in here. The bucket that we normally use to clean pens out, the manure bucket, it's down at home. And then we have this tooth bucket here. It hasn't been used for a while because it's getting in bad shape. It was a really good bucket at one time. It's actually the original bucket that belongs on this skid loader. It was on it when everybody got it. So I, I would assume it's probably the same age as what the skid loader was. It probably come from the dealership new with this bucket on it. It's still got some spots that are really good. Like the attachment plate and that, it's not that war at all. It's just I mean some buckets will get so slopped out and then they won't stay on the skid loaders. This one here is relatively tight because I don't think we used it a whole lot. Before we had that big feeding bucket that we use now, the the other bucket that we use for manure, the, the one that's down at home, that bucket by Pap had put together. I think he got it from New Holland years ago. That was back when we had the, the 885 New Holland and the other LS 180. I think something got messed up on it and they threw it in the scrap pile. He brought it home and put it together. And that used to be the feed bucket. It was 84 inch or 82 inch, I can't remember. One of the two. It's a bigger, longer bucket, but it doesn't have a high back on it. It's a, it's a dirt bucket like this one. This one here, it needs new teeth put on the tooth bar. We have some down there. It's on another tooth bar, but the tooth bar it has the teeth on it, it's not long enough to go in this bucket. This is a 78 inch bucket, I believe. The tooth bar is 72 inch. We could probably make it work somehow, but I think we can take the teeth off of the other tooth bar, put it on this one, and then patch the bucket up. <laughs> you see here in the corner, it's, uh, it's in pretty bad shape, but I think it'll hold up enough to get this pen scooped out. I used it the other day, but yeah, it'd be a really good tooth bucket if I get some time. Uh, fix it up a little bit and put some new teeth on it and it'll be a good bucket a new tooth bucket is i don't know probably twenty five hundred dollars maybe it's pretty crazy what they want for buckets but this one here still has some life left in it you can get the get it patched up 
what happened was we used it for manure all the time and just the manure sitting in there eventually rotted and rusted that all out there but like i said we'll get her fixed up the other bucket it needs some work done to it too just the buckets are just so old and, and the feed and the, the manure just rusts them out there right at the same place that other bucket needs fixed up but we'll get to it someday and we'll have some pretty decent buckets again bucket bends and take the sawzall and cut a, a V in it like come up and I uh, feel like that that way I can hit the hit it with a hammer and bend it down around to fit the bucket that's what we did to the other side and it worked pretty good let's take this section here cut a V in it through and cleaned all this junk out of here and there's some over here so now we can work at the workbench there and <laughs> measure out some of these spots here it had rubbed through beside the skid plate here you can see the buckets kind of pushed up in there there's nothing there to support it i'll get some flat metal and run some beads all down along both sides of the skid plate there then uh got some metal to put on here let's weld one side bend it around the bucket there like and weld the other side i think it should be fixed up pretty decent so it's the next day here now i got this bucket finished up you guys know i did some work to the side to fix it up strengthen it up some put some metal on the bottom where it was rubbed through in a couple places and i also fixed a quick attach up here this piece that goes along the side to help guide you into latch the bucket on that side was broke off so i made a piece out of flat metal welded it on there and then I had to fix this one here up it was the weld was broke and then I did some work down here to where the skid loader latches on it was getting pretty war and the bucket would slip off sometimes if you're back dragging with it the pin would come up out of the hole it's just getting more there so I put a piece of flat metal there hopefully it tightened the bucket up I think it did the pins got tight whenever I put it down through so it should hold up pretty good now now the next project is to work on this tooth bucket down here that's going to take a little bit of time it's got some pretty major holes in it hope you enjoyed the video if you did enjoy it like and subscribe as always and i want to thank you guys for watching I'm finishing up here with my phone because my gopro is acting up again i changed a bunch of settings around yesterday could not get it figured out so i don't know i guess i'll have to buy a new one it's got dropped a couple times and fell off stuff, so maybe it just got messed up. I don't know. 
you guys know anything about GoPros and the stabilization and that kind of stuff. Got a Hero 8 black. And if you're standing here filming, if you watch here in the little screen, the the video will just get so shaky. If I'm holding the camera still like that, the screen will start jumping around and stuff. So I'm not sure what the deal is with it. Like I said, if anybody knows about these cameras and uh, it's fixable, please let me know down in the comments. I really appreciate it. I'll try to fix it, but if I have to buy a new one, I definitely will. But I think I'll also film with my phone some too. It seems to make a pretty good video, I think, for like action shots and that. I think I'll start using my phone, but for uh, just me talking and that kind of stuff, it's nice having the GoPro, but yep. We'll see. Thanks, guys.